Hey guys, Prod here. Come back at you again with another... Wait, no. <clears throat> so sometimes when I'm uh, recording these videos, like last night I recorded the Profane Capital video, and I get to think, and I'm like, man, did I record enough footage for, for you know, like a 10, 15 minute video? Uh, and I've been and blame the length of these videos on you guys. Um, YouTube says you guys have a 7 minute long attention span, so... Uh, <laughs> I aim for 10 minutes. Anyway, sometimes these videos, uh, I get more invasions than I need, um, which is always, you know, it's fine, it's fun. Um, but sometimes they're like really good invasions, and I, I felt like I had to absolutely make a different video and put these on there for sure. Um, this video is going to just kind of go over uh, basic ways that you can uh, fight two, two opponents. Um, different stuff you can do to sort of uh, leverage the odds in your favor. Where the video's at doesn't matter. Um, don't let a guy buff. This is not Honor Souls. This is not... This is not... Four Souls Honor. Dark Honor. The Honor Returns. Um, so the host actually went out looking for us. So we got this high level phantom there. Uh, and it's just me and him. So we're going to get as much damage in as we can. Um, and, and in these sort of situations, it's always important to maximize on, on the fact that you, you're lucky enough to get a 1v1 in the invasion um, until you don't. <laughs> but the whole point of the invasion uh, is, is you're going to be fighting multiple opponents most of the time. So when that happens, you, you, wanna, you want to basically find ways to segregate your party. Uh, you want to you want to you want to turn it into a couple of different one-on-one -on -one scenarios, even if that means that you uh, it, 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 you're, you're fighting somebody one-on-one -on -one for for three seconds. That's still three seconds you need to take advantage of. Now these guys right here, they're trying to cover each other's backs, <clears throat> but in doing so, they can't. They they, they don't come at me at the same time, um, and and that allows me to really just keep picking them apart separately. Now that was a uh, that was probably the best move they did all fight um, when the, the host threw his fireball, uh, his chaos bed vestiges, and the the phantom used his uh, great sword, ultra great sword, to to try and pressure me. Um, so I realized what they're doing now. They're kind of catching on. You can see the the fireballs are better. Uh, the great sword comes in when the fireballs are coming in now. They, they they're starting to figure this this team game out. Um, so I'm there was like a, a 15 second interval there where all you saw me do was just dodge fireballs and wait until the guy wait until the host ran out of uh, blue juice and then I went and uh, put a diaper on him now after they, they start to figure out like what I'm doing it, it changes the tactics again so now I'm going to give him a little gesture I'm going to tell him I'm gonna be like, look come on man come on come on that, that gold guy's not healing. He's dead. He, like, he's dead. He knows he's dead. I know he's dead. We all know he's dead. Um, <laughs> GG. And then he just kills himself. Um, so, yeah, but... Take the time to appreciate the tactics that your, your opponents are, are showing you. Uh, and respect them. Even if you wouldn't normally. <laughs> you respect someone who comes at you 2, 3, V on 1, whatever it is. Um, at least appreciate whether or not they're coming at you 2, 3, B, 1 uh, in a good way, in a way that makes sense, in a way that will win them in the invasion. Uh, because I guarantee you a lot of the times <clears throat> they are. <laughs> you know, anything that can just chain stun lock you into absolute fucking hell uh, is a good tactic. Um, you can't hail on these dudes for playing that way. You know what I mean? You invaded their, their game. So they're going to bring the thunder uh, as best they can. Um, now what you can't make fun of is uh, pussy ass bitches. Um, disconnecting uh, fucking scrubs uh, cheaters essentially the game lets you do anything you want the, anything inside the game is is fair you can do anything you want you can use a straight sword you can use a katana you can use pre-nerfed Garthus curve sword you know what I mean like y y we can complain about it don't get me wrong you're, you're, you're allowed to complain about shit all you want it's fine but uh, it's in the game so hornet ring parry spam you know the good, take the good or the bad the only thing the game doesn't want you to do uh, is cheat. And when you disconnect from your opponent uh, on either side, you're basically cheating. Now, an invader can can technically disconnect fairly with a black crystal, but that requires that you actually like take the you know you've got to find a space to use it. 
Um, hosts don't have that option. They're not supposed to have that option. The, uh, the impetus of, of winning is on them. It's their world. I'm just a guest. I'm a very, very... I'm an awful guest. I'm a terrible guest. We have one enemy right here to help uh, play this level. And um, that's all we had. Uh, but he was more than enough to help us with these two fucking scrubs. Uh, I, I won't say the Phantom's a scrub, but this host is definitely... Fucking pure-blown cancer. He's pure-blown feline aids. What a shit show. Alright, so this time we spawned in the Toxic Swamp, and I know based on my spawn location, um, they've at least left the Profane Capital bonfire. They've at least left. Then I hear pots breaking, I see Toxic uh, Bob. Um, so I know that they're up here. Here's Toxic Bob. I was actually going to drop him some Toxic Mist. You see me giving him like the friendly wave? I was going to give him some Toxic Mist. Uh, but then I saw this guy and I thought, nope, fuck it, he gets to die. <laughs> I hate over little phantoms. I hate them. I hate them. If, if, if you're trying to help your friend play Dark Souls, I, I completely understand. I've, I've done the same. Um, but I always make a new character when I do it because it's one, it's more fun, and uh, two, um, I'm, I'm not trying to make Dark Souls easy mode for my friend. You know what I mean? Uh, now, to be fair, my friend, he's the guy that got me into Dark Souls. So when I help him, you know, he's he's familiar with Dark Souls. He knows he, he knows like the gist of how things work and stuff. Um, you see me switch to the Hornet Ring and the the, the Dex Dagger. Um, I'm just trying to get rid of that guy as quickly as possible. Now he was content to spam that weapon art a lot, um, but this is a good lesson in uh, in stun lock weapons because these two great swords put you in a shitty shitty situation. Um, and I'm not using anything that's got poise of my own. So if I had a two-handed great sword, I could basically uh, just raffle stomp these motherfuckers into the ground um, because I would. I would have the forethought to have put a lot of poise on said character, um, but in this situation, that's not the case. Uh, this is a level 59 Dex dude, so level 59 Dex dude, he doesn't have any uh, uh, poise at all. He, he, I mean, he has hyper armor options. He could go with a Hollow Slayer, but so same exact thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear these two out as they come at me. Um, I'm also going to be giving them a shit ton of gestures. Um, I'm, I'm playing fucking four-dimensional chess. I'm playing psychological mind games. I'm the I'm the cerebral assassin. Love that hitbox. Great new hitbox, Dark Souls 3. Um, there you see, god damn, how much damage you can just get caught up in. Uh, it's just a fucking, it's like a ceiling fan made of great swords. Uh, <laughs> So I'm, I'm swapping back and forth. You can see I'm curious about going for the guard break here. Um, and, and they still keep their shields up. They really don't understand uh, what's going on at all. Um, but I, but they're, they're good enough to keep me far enough away that I can't uh, do the guard break without risking grave or serious injury. And, and always keep that in mind. High risk, uh, high reward. Never go for something that's you know high risk, low reward. And in that situation, I couldn't guarantee that even if I got that guard break my repost would one shot him so that's 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 high risk low reward now if you knew for a fact you'd kill him I might be more inclined to go for it but we don't know that I decided to come up here I was hoping to like maybe show him something a little different I totally forgot that dude was a CPV spammer and uh, I hate chaos bed vestiges I hate it it's it's Dark Souls easy mode the the PvE Chaos Bed Vestiges is pretty much just the answer to everything. You can just chuck Chaos Bed Vestiges at it. So anytime I fight uh, Chaos Bed Vestiges spammer, um, I, 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 I seriously like want to win just to sort of prove to them that Chaos Bed Vestiges doesn't solve all your problems. Um, also, here I go for it. And it totally worked. Um, try and get him with a throwing knife. Not able to uh, kill him in time. Um, I, I, this this goes the same for people who summon their overleveled phantoms, uh, and they think that that just makes Dark Souls. You know what I mean? Like they think it gives them the right to just walk through the fucking game or some shit. I hate that. Cannot fucking stand it. Um, co-opers don't bother me at all. Like anytime I, I invade co-opers, um, that that's that's fine. But it's like for some reason I like personally am uh, 
hurt <laughs> if you use overleveled phantoms and chaos bed vestiges. For some reason, that just breaks my heart. Um, so I've switched to a poisoned harp here because these guys both like to keep their shields up. So I know it's just a few hits. Poison Harp is nice because it goes around shields anyway. It's double nice because it inflicts poison. And I know what you're saying, you know, the, the damage sucks. Yeah, but the damage buildup is, is, is not suck. Is not suck. Is good. Is not suck. Is good. <laughs> so we got the uh, Phantom Poison there. And now it's just a matter of time before he sits around and dies. So we'll go back to the uh, Straight Sword. <clears throat> poison, everybody knocks on Poison. It says it's not very good. Um, people forget uh, that it does. This is this goes back to what I was saying yesterday. Um, there are some things that quant can't be quantified by numbers, and one of those things is pressure. You can't. You can't. There's no stat for pressure. There's no number for pressure. Um, pressure's good, no matter how you do it, and no matter how you cook it up. So, bleed and poison, while they may not be as good as they used to be, uh, they're still good because they apply pressure. And anything you can, anything that 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 pressures your opponent and makes them play differently, uh, is is definitely a good thing. See, now that we've got him one-on-one, -on -one, this is just an absolute one-sided shit show beat down. And he's poisoned and we can just follow him around and really just give him hell for... And there's the uh, old, don't circle me, I'll circle you, baby. Anyway, uh, this was an informative video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, see you guys next time. Later, y'all.